All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get started. If you, uh, if there's any audio problems, please let us know in the feedback uh, in the webinar chat. Um, and throughout the presentation, there's a Q&A button that you can click to, uh, to let us know what you would like us to ask the panelists live. And we'll answer as many as we can. If we can't, we'll, uh, we'll respond to all your questions at least afterwards through email. So as an introduction, my name is Vu Nguyen. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Phoenix LiDAR Systems. A lot of you may have heard of us, and I hope so, but just in case, Phoenix LiDAR Systems, we specialize in compact, customizable, survey-grade mapping systems, so both mapping for LiDAR and photogrammetry, um, and fully automated cloud LiDAR post-processing. Um, we'll touch on these a little bit later. Um, would you advance the next slide, Conrad? So first of all, just a little bit of background. Why, why are we doing this? Um, it's because we started, uh, we launched the first commercial UAV LiDAR system uh, way back in the day. So in 2012, the guy who is our CEO, Grayson Omens, um, had this great idea, which is, can we combine LiDAR sensors with drones so that we can do really precise aerial surveying um, and bridge a gap that, uh, that exists with, between human manned LiDAR and then aerial LiDAR? Um, all these can work together, and how do we get LiDAR to augment the strengths of photogrammetry, which are, which are great. Um, so we worked with, uh, he got in touch with Velodyne, and so our very first, the industry's first commercial UAV LiDAR system featured a Velodyne sensor. Um, anyway, sorry, I just got a phone call, but I won't rattle through all the rest of those points here. But the... Um, the history of Phoenix just has gone through since then. So five years, real-time point cloud, uh, VTOL fixed wing UAV LiDAR system. And we're really excited about our post-processing platform, LiDAR Mill, and the terrain following flight planner uh, tool, which, uh, which we just launched about a month ago. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to a few of our great team members. First, we have Conrad, who's going to be leading the conversation um, along with Ira. Conrad is our senior post-processing manager and Ira is one of our post-processing engineers. Um, on the call also, we have David, our director of sales. I'm sorry, Eric, our director of sales. I'm sure I'll hear about that afterward. And, uh, and David, one of our regional sales managers. So they'll be helping with a lot of the chat questions and the Q&A questions. And so now I'd like to pass it over to Conrad. Hello, everybody. Um, hope everyone's having a good day so far. Today we are going to um, go over three different data sets that um, illustrate popular uh, uses of UAV LiDAR. Um, we'll touch on uh, how these data sets provide a unique um, advantage uh, compared to other remote sensing methods. Uh, the first data set we're going to look at is a disaster response data set. Then we're going to move on to a high precision infrastructure monitoring data set and finally take a look at a data set that um, was collected uh, for a challenging topographic survey. So um, first we'll take a look at um, a response to disaster. Hello all, uh, Ira here. I wanted to walk you through this uh, first data set uh, response to disaster. As you are all very familiar with, uh, Houston was recently devastated with a $125 billion damage uh, hurricane event. Um, major flooding uh, made the city planners and emergency planners relook at the bayou system as well as the uh, impenetrable surfaces of the city itself and realized that their uh, their hydrologic mapping and uh, subsequent emergency planning needed a revamp. So we were tasked to evaluate a small section of Bayou that was recently constructed, uh, had a golf course constructed near it. So the riparian area and subsequent hydrologic uh, modeling and flow was altered uh, and thus their floodplain modeling and emergency planning needed to be updated as well. Since this was a relatively small section of Bayou, uh, traditional LiDAR was not necessarily going to be the best application for them. Uh, the slow response time, uh, getting a plane or a helicopter in the air, uh, 
It requires a lot of FAA planning and other acquisition planning that uh, can be streamlined through UAV use. Also the added risk in an emergency situation, uh, putting manned operations up in the, uh, up in the air is uh, counterproductive to this sort of response, uh, thus making UAV acquisition that much more valuable. Photogrammetry could possibly be used uh, for this application, but because we're looking at ground models and hydrologic modeling of this area, any areas with vegetation would pose quite a problem, uh, as well as any water surfaces require quite a bit of uh, difficult processing with photogrammetry, both of which made photogrammetry not the ideal uh, method in which to uh, update these floodplain models. So UAV LiDAR was a perfect application for this, uh, this small area. Over four flights, uh, each about 10 minutes long, Phoenix LiDAR systems surveyed this uh, section of bayou and subsequent golf course uh, and ended up with about 101 acres, all perfectly uh, processed in which to feed straight into their existing hydrologic models uh, without any uh, added acquisition or added processing. Orthos were also, or imagery was also taken during this acquisition uh, via the same platform and same flights to produce an ortho mosaic and also allow for RGB extraction into the point cloud. We utilized uh, the Phoenix LiDAR Ranger system uh, because it has very, very good vegetation penetration, um, a high resolution point cloud and very, very accurate um, data sets. I believe that we ended up with a two centimeter RMSEZ for absolute vertical accuracy on this project. The outputs that came out from this project uh, included a dense calibrated classified RGB extracted LiDAR point cloud. Uh, along with that, we produced seamless orthomosaic, water delineation for their hydrologic modeling, one foot contours, and a uh, highly detailed canopy model to allow for their riparian analysis as well. Through all of these data sets, uh, actionable data was given to the client that they could directly feed into their hydrologic models and hit the ground running in a short period of, period of time to update their Bayou hydrologic models. We uh, are now gonna go into the actual data of this. We have our own data viewers, and uh, pardon us if there's a little bit of lag, we will try to move this slowly, as uh, depending on your connectivity, you may see a little bit of a lag. Yeah, we're um, loading this data through the web, um, so you might see a little bit of tiling, um, kind of as the data is loading, but hopefully this should look smooth to everyone. So you can see the colorization of this point cloud is uh, half the RGB values, mostly the, the intensity and saturation of the RGB, uh, along with an elevation ramp. And here you can see very clear capture of the vegetation, as well as the banks of the bayou itself. Uh, as this was a newly constructed golf course, the, uh, the interplay between the bayou bank and the golf course itself was exceptionally important to capture and from this vantage, you can see that there's a lot of detail along those banks. If we uh, zoom out a little bit, we'll be able to toggle off some of these layers. This is a classified point cloud, so we can um, easily turn off the vegetation layers and uh, buildings and power lines, because those were also present in the data. And uh, I'll zoom out a little bit more to help illustrate this. Um, uh, I'm going to go to the uh, materials and we can stretch this color ramp to help kind of show us the, um, the range of elevation values along the ground surface here. So even though we had a highly vegetated data set, the ground capture was uh, very, very good. I think, I believe that we had over 30 points per square meter just on the ground alone under vegetation, upwards of 
200 shot, 200 points per square meter uh, in exposed ground areas. This type of density allows for extremely uh, precise and accurate contours and other hydrologic um, data for input into their models and provide the client with the kind of confidence that they're looking for when it comes to saving lives and responding to emergency situations. So we'll go back to the slideshow and take a look at some of the products that were created from this data set. The client was very interested in uh, the various applications of UAV, LIDAR, and photogrammetry, and therefore uh, a variety of products were created for this. Um, this way, one data set could enter this, the municipality of Houston and be uh, disseminated into the various institutions that may want to investigate riparian analysis, vegetation analysis, perhaps even permitting of the golf course itself, along with the absolute uh, purpose of hydro hydrologic modeling and emergency response for future hurricane events. On the top left, you'll see the highest hit model. This is the highest return uh, in any given one foot cell for the entire data set. In the bottom left of that image, you can just barely make out a power line going across the bayou, uh, as well as the majority of the data, which is vegetation. This allows extraction of treetop data, um, canopy height, canopy density, uh, and allows for any further studies to allow for a change analysis or a comparison between data sets. On the bottom left, you'll see the digital elevation model. This is the ground surface itself, uh, along with building footprints uh, from the neighborhood nearby this bayou. This, the combination of building footprints as well as the DEM allows for very, very accurate hydro hydrologic modeling when it comes to impervious surfaces and the interplay between uh, hydrologic modeling and urban environments. On the bottom right, we have our one foot contour data set of the entire area. Um, you can see the detail that was captured in this from very small drainages within the golf course to the natural drainages on the north side in the forested area. Um, this, once again, uh, is exactly what hydrologic modelers need to provide an actionable, um, confident data set in which to make plans for emergency situations. And on the top right is our seamless ortho mosaic that was utilized to extract RGB values into the point cloud and give a, a macro overview of the entire area. Makes the data a little bit more digestible when you're digging into the um, more nitty gritty deliverables. Once again, we captured over 750 points per square meter over these four flights over a course of 40 minutes, uh, 32 points per square meter under the ground, under the canopy itself uh, with a sub two centimeter RMSEZ absolute accuracy. Uh, these sorts of stats allow our client to uh, take this data without question and move forward with it and react in the speed that is necessary for these sorts of disasters. With that said, we will move on to our next case study. You, LIDAR has been used for uh, infrastructure modeling and monitoring quite extensively. Um, traditionally from fixed wing and helicopter applications, uh, this has been an industry that has been uh, successful for quite a while, but has led to certain holes in the industry, certain data sets that were unable to capture. And this case study exemplifies one of those. Uh, Phoenix LiDAR system had a uh, power company that needed to investigate the distribution lines within a neighborhood level. Anybody who is familiar with the utility industry knows that, or even driving down the street, knows that these small distribution lines going from power poles to individual households or even uh, commercial units 
quickly become very small, tiny wires that turn into um, quite a maze of utility management. Comparing traditional utility surveying, which uh, often targets high kilovolt lines, say 230 kilovolt lines floating 200 feet above the ground. Uh, those are quite easily captured via traditional LIDAR, but but these small distribution lines are very often missed in such data sets. Uh, this power company happened to know this and wisely um, sought us out to utilize UAV LIDAR to find these distribution lines. So once again, traditional LIDAR was not nearly dense enough to capture these distribution lines. Also for a footprint such as a neighborhood level uh, survey, getting a plane in the air, uh, a whole crew, an operator, a pilot, et cetera, in the sky, adds risk and adds cost to such a uh, appropriately sized project. UAV-based photogrammetry, while has its certain applications, uh, utility monitoring is not one of those. It is not precise enough and photogrammetry, uh, 3D point clouds via photogrammetry often lose uh, or don't even capture power lines, let alone distribution lines. Right, the photogrammetry-based point cloud could be extremely dense on uh, hard surfaces, but the uh, little lines that are connecting um, these homes to the, to the infrastructure um, most likely wouldn't get picked up. You would need ridiculous uh, image resolution to, to collect those, and that would be prohibitive. In a urban neighborhood environment as well, these distribution lines are extremely hard to survey uh, for property rights um, and people want letting utilities onto their property. So this allows both uh, the large, the overview of the neighborhood as well as the small details of each individual unit and property to be surveyed appropriately. Uh, a Phoenix LiDAR Ranger system was utilized for this 48-acre 40 40 neighborhood. You can see on the image on the right uh, the flight lines via image events. We utilize two oblique RGB cameras in conjunction with the LiDAR in which to get oblique imagery that better, uh, better shows the vertical surfaces of such an urban neighborhood. One RGB camera pointing straight down will often miss the sidewalls of buildings, the profiles of trees, uh, and any other vertical surfaces that are very present in these uh, urban environments. This 40-acre flight took 10 minutes uh, and ended with a dense calibrated RGB-fused point cloud as well as a seamless orthomosaic. Uh, let's take a look at that data. We've got that um, ready as well in our viewer. So um, this data set is extremely dense and uh, we'll have to be a little patient uh, as we zoom in to get the uh, full resolution of the LIDAR because there are so many points. Um, as we come in here, we can see that the lines in the buildings are all showing up with um, pretty amazing detail. We've got it colored based on the RGB values right now and uh, the wires and towers are highlighted um, in a white just to kind of make them pop and um, illustrate the data a little bit better. As we kind of circle around, if we focus on one of these towers, we can see just how much detail there is um, in this point cloud. Compared to traditional LiDAR, 
which often collects, say, 20 to 100 points per line per span. We see a nearly continuous point cloud uh, for every single uh, main line as well as distribution line in this data set. Even such details as in individual resistors on insulators are visible, um, transistor boxes and uh, subsequent utilities on the ground are also easily captured both via RGB and LiDAR. The detail that's captured in these small distribution lines weaving in and out bushes and uh, through people's backyards is truly what is important to these, uh, these utility companies as the management of these small distribution lines quickly becomes uh, a nightmare when you get beyond the neighborhood level. This level of detail and the subsequent models that can be created from this dense of a point cloud uh, allow for very actionable, easily digested data sets for utility companies to then properly send out crews for proper uh, trimming and utility management. PLS CAD models can easily be created from this data uh, as attachment points, pole tops, pole bottoms, um, exact measurement of SAG uh, is all very calculatable from this data set precisely what utility engineers need for proper management. Um, like the other data set we just finished looking at, this one is uh, classified. And so we can toggle off certain levels. Um, so I'll turn off all of the buildings and vegetation class. Um, I'm also going to uh, switch the view from showing RGB to showing uh, elevation values. And then we can get a nice um, separation of our utility infrastructure from the rest of the above ground objects. This kind of gives us an indication of just how uh, complex these these systems are. So if we go back to our presentation, we'll be able to take a look at some of the products that this LiDAR data set was able to, um, well, allowed us to create. You can see from this detailed CAD model screenshot on the left, that individual features such as utility boxes, transistors, uh, attachment points, even the poles holding the, uh, the street lights themselves were easily found in the point cloud and uh, created into a model. On the bottom right, you can see an overview of the entire, entire neighborhood and the connectivity of all of the distribution lines from their 65 kV mains all the way to the tiny little phone lines connecting individual buildings. On the top right, this is a screenshot from the actual point cloud itself, showing the ground in comparison to the uh, rest of the above ground features. This 610 point per square meter data set uh, captured all of the distribution lines the client was expecting, uh, plus some. It's amazing how many can be hidden in between trees and rerouted uh, via their uh, residents. 125 points per square meter per flight line um, made CAD modeling easy and, uh, and actionable and confident. This is, these are the words that utility companies are looking for and uh, the exact type of data these systems can deliver. All right, let's, uh, let's move forward to our third um, case study. The third data set we're going to go over is uh, from a challenging topographic survey. An engineering company um, was 
assessing um, the development of a specific plot of land. This plot of land uh, was densely vegetated. And in order to um, determine the cost of development, um, they have to factor in uh, how much ground is going to need to be moved. Um, we learned during this project that leftover soil um, after the, uh, I guess, design of the neighborhood is very costly to remove. Um, and you know you can quantify that by how many dump trucks it takes to um, to remove all of this excess uh, earth. And um, making an accurate prediction of that can uh, really make or break a uh, a project. And the the typical methodology of um, for this kind of a project is to send out a field crew and have them shoot uh, topo points. Um, and use their survey to build a digital elevation model just based on gridded, gridded survey points from a, from a field crew. Uh, in this particular case, the area of interest um, was so densely vegetated that a field crew um, couldn't really get through. The brush um, below the canopy was just simply too dense and um, UAV LIDAR turned out to be the the appropriate and best solution uh, for getting an accurate uh, elevation model in this area. For this project, a uh, Phoenix Ranger system was used. Uh, LIDAR and high resolution imagery were collected. It was a, a fairly small area, 60 acres, um, and so it only took about nine minutes to do this survey. Uh, it was flown at 60 meters above ground level. Um, you can see uh, kind of a fun image uh, from the landing zone on the, the top right there. We had a, a bunch of uh, cow friends that were out in the field with us. Uh, and just below that, you can see a, a screen capture of uh, our base station that we were uh, controlling the LIDAR from. Um, and we're looking at a real-time point cloud that we were able to use to ensure that we were uh, getting the proper coverage with, with our LiDAR system. Um, we've got this data um, that we're gonna show you as well. So let's toggle to that one. So starting off, you can see that our, um, our point cloud has uh, really nice RGB values that were extracted from the, the photos that were uh, co-acquired during the LiDAR acquisition. Um, the photo processing to create this RGB extraction is uh, really automated. Um, the photos are directly georeferenced based on the trajectory, uh, which is the same trajectory that the LiDAR has. So um, it's a pretty quick um, to get to this uh, really uh, awesome data set. I'm going to use uh, one of our tools in the viewer's toolbox to create a profile view um, so we can see kind of just what this uh, what this vegetation layer looks like. I'll just cut a cross section kind of right right through here. And uh, I'm going to maximize this height profile view so that we can all get a, a good look at uh, what this data, uh, data set really entails. Uh, through this uh, one meter wide cross section, we can see that the, the canopy uh, up top is pretty continuous. Uh, there's really not a view of the, the ground surface at all through the, the upper canopy. And then when you look a little closer at the, the lower canopy, you can see that the, the bush is um, extremely dense. Um, going down below that, we can see that despite those two thick layers of vegetation, we still have um, quite a good coverage of points along the ground. So this is really the, the ultimate goal of this project was to get these ground points um, without having to, you know, take a, a machete and uh, chop your way through this, this vegetation. Uh, 
Uh, we can also, um, in this data set, let's see, I will toggle on and off the veg layers. Uh, there aren't any buildings, so we'll just turn off the veg and um, change the uh, symbology to show us elevation. And then um, do a little bit of stretching so we can kind of see the relief um, of, the, of the ground in this area. So with, with everything off except the ground, um, well, I've got the wires on there as well, but um, with just the ground layer visible, we can see um, that despite that, that thick vegetation, we've got uh, continuous, dense, um, detailed shot of the topography of this area. So that, that was really the ultimate goal of this, this acquisition. We're able to take this data and turn it into um, a couple of products that were uh, of particular interest. Um, if you can see that grayscale um, digital elevation model image, that, that's really the, um, the main purpose of this. And uh, we can see some fine details in that that definitely wouldn't be visible um, without UAV LIDAR. We can kind of see some, some trails and some drainages going through there. Um, this high resolution uh, allows for really accurate understanding of exactly how much ground is there and, and where it is. Overall, below the canopy, we were getting um, greater than 30 points um, per square meter on the ground surface. So that, that's pretty great for uh, compared to a, a gridded field crew out there surveying this. Um, that's a pretty amazing detail. And below that canopy, um, luckily during this project, we had um, ground checkpoints that were taken using a robotic total station. And compared to those, we were hitting three centimeters um, RMSEZ, which is insanely good. Um, that, that added a level of confidence that um, makes this data pretty much the best solution for, um, for this particular situation. Um, we've also got a, a little interesting thing to, to show here. Um, we noticed on Google Earth um, over the past, well, uh, in about the span of a year, um, the Google Earth imagery had uh, been updated a couple of times and uh, we could see the progress that was happening uh, post, post the LiDAR survey. So that was uh, really fun and uh, exciting for us. Um, those were the three uh, projects that we wanted to go over. Cool. Well, thank you very much to, uh, to Conrad and to Ira for both presenting. They're both our, some of our post-processing engineers. And uh, thanks also to Eric for, uh, for answering a lot of questions in the background. Now, as we, uh, as we move forward with these webinars, we hope we're providing a lot of valuable data. There are so many topics that we could cover, um, especially with five years of working in this industry. So tell us what you would like to see. So it could be UAV LiDAR use cases, or it could be best practices on post-processing or how to, uh, how to set up your system so that you can avoid errors with LiDAR acquisition. So uh, Conrad, would you go to the last slide or the next slide? So with that, we'll go ahead and we'll sign off. Um, and uh, please keep us in mind. Let us know your suggestions. You can email me directly uh, at marketing at phoenixlidar.com. That just goes to me. And if you'd like, connect with us on social media. The handles, all of those, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, they're all Phoenix LIDAR. And with that, unless, uh, unless the team has anything else to say, I wanted to say thank you again one last time to Conrad, Ira, Eric, and David. And uh, thank you all for joining in. Yeah, it was our pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining in, everybody.